Hello, everyone, and welcome to another winning episode of the Giant Take Podcast. My name is Josh, and I'm joined by my friend and my co-host, Alex. The Giants went on primetime. What is going on? It snaps a nine-game losing streak for the G-Men on Monday Night Football. Nine games. (laughs) That's unbelievable. Uh, It's the first Giants home win on Monday Night Football since November 14th of 2016, when the Giants beat the Bengals 21-20. How many wins does Daniel Jones have on primetime, more specifically Monday Night Football? That's a nice goose egg for everyone at home watching or listening. It's zero. But how many does the man, how you doing, keep it moving, Tommy DeVito have? One, baby. And that win came tonight. I'm Josh, and I'm joined by Alex. I said it already. I don't care. We're going back-to-back name drops. Alex, this Giants team is one game away. From the NFC wild card spot, while also still have a top, having a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. If you want to look at it both ways, they have the eighth pick in the draft and are a game away from the wild card. How you doing? The best of both worlds, Josh. Uh, I'm doing great. It was a fun win. Probably the best win of the season so far, I'd say. Maybe debatable, but I don't know. It was the most fun to watch. You had pregame with Tommy DeVito's agent, um, who looks straight out of... I don't even know where he'd be out of, but he fit exactly how he should have fit. Um, the family I'll tailgate tell you, before I'll tell you him. He looked, out of. he looked straight out of either Godfather, Goodfellas, or any other Italian mob movie you could think of. A Martin Scorsese film all dolled up for a four hour. When you're going to sit on the couch and watch an Italian mob boss movie from like four hours long, like The Irishman or something like that, you're going to see Tommy DeVito's agent sitting there with that top hat on and the suit and all of the above. And how about him sitting with the family, by the way, and standing up and them kissing each other during the break <laughs> when Tommy DeVito got that score? Oh, my goodness. Tommy Cutlet's going at him. And I can't believe I name dropped that before you did. It's it's just it's immense, Josh. Um, the whole thing, the dad is perfect, too. Um, the, the whole family is perfect. And the fact that he still lives in his home, um, you know, his childhood home. He lives like literally 10 minutes away from our childhood homes, um, which is pretty funny as well. And we're going to yeah, have to visit just, him when we go back for winter break. Yeah. We're going to go take a picture in front of his house. That's for sure. I think we're um, going to have to drop off a chicken cutlet. Yeah. I mean, can we do it as well as his mom can? Probably not, but we can at least wow. try. Right. So um, yeah, it's just, it's a complete spectacle and it's so fun to watch. And This Giants team doesn't make it easy, but to be on the winning side of a game-winning field goal, Randy Bullock, terrible miss in the beginning of the game, you know, I guess makes up for that at the end. Packers did not play their best for sure, but it was good. Good win. And Wondell Robinson, I mean, he's the key of the game today, besides Tommy DeVito, obviously, really, really stepped up. I keep mentioning him throughout this season. Each and every game, I'm like, when is Wondell Robinson – going to have that game when is he going to break out uh and that was today and over 100 yards um in the air and on the ground so a really really positive day from him and uh you know the offense moved pretty well scoring 24 points so overall uh really really happy and I think I I kind of segued into a nice transition there for us you you set the offense into a nice transition I I felt like I, I was like ooh, I talked briefly about the offense and it was like setting you up on the platter Oh. About the offense. oh, yeah, 100%, Alex. It's a great job by you to talk about the offense and talk about what Brian Dable said. What impressed him about Tommy DeVito, quote, earn the right to play today, earn the right to play next week. The kid's doing a good job. And already Dable confirming that Tommy DeVito is the starter. Still no more Tyrod Taylor. Unbelievable, I think, honestly, that the Giants and Brian Dable specifically made that call so early in the week last week. Didn't even wait until... Thursday, Friday, Saturday to make the call for the Monday Night Football game. Did it earlier, I think on Tuesday, that DeVito was going to start. And then does it in the post-game presser after tonight's game. That next Sunday at 1, we're seeing Tommy DeVito on the field against the Saints. That's pretty crazy to me, but if Dable wants to ride the hot hand, like he's been saying, he has the hot hand. I think Darius Slayton said that um, we got to ride the hot hand, and that hot hand is Tommy DeVito. And so, okay. You mentioned the offense. Let's get to the offense now. And you talked about a few different players. We'll start off with the veto stat line. 17 for 21, 158 yards, and a touchdown. Now, sometimes 
he showed off that he was a third string practice squad quarterback. And that's what he came into the league, at least to be this season uh, with overthrowing guys, putting players in tough situations to make grabs. A couple of them done by Wanda Robinson, as we talked about one, I know on the right side line, if you remember that catch getting two feet down, I believe that was Robinson. Um, and then the other one was in the end zone or near the end zone when he had that bobble grab where he was able to bring it in. Two amazing grabs by him. And I don't know how much that's on Tommy DeVito, but I think he could have definitely put his players in better positions. It was the same way with Jordan Love, who we'll get to a little bit later when we talk about the Giants defense. Uh, Jordan Love also made it very hard on his receivers to make grabs. But let's be honest, Alex, Tommy DeVito outplayed Jordan Love tonight. And I think that was very obvious by the amount of completions he had to uh, attempts. 17 for 21 is a good stat line. Uh, and, and yes, he was able to just do enough. Over 150 yards is not crazy, but he was 10 for 71 on the on the rushing game attack too. Tommy DeVito, the versatile quarterback, getting it done with his legs as well. And um, a very good job by him there. I was very impressed by how he was able to kind of maneuver in the pocket, especially for no experience really. And even in college, right? This guy played on two separate teams. I believe it was, well, I know it was Syracuse, and then I think he transferred to Illinois, if I'm not mistaken. He wasn't too great on either of those teams. Then he comes into the NFL, becomes the starter after two of the starting quarterback and the backup quarterback go down. And right now in his uh, third or fourth game playing for the Giants in the regular season, he's looking like a decent-ish quarterback. I, it's weird to say it out of my mouth. That's why I took a second to think about it. But the way I think he was able to maneuver around the Packers defensive line and linebackers, I thought was pretty phenomenal at times. Saquon Barkley as well, looking like the Saquon Barkley of old. 20 carries, 86 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, then receiving, you already touched on Robinson. I'll just add the stat along with it. Six catches for 79 yards. Isaiah Hodgins getting another touchdown in this game. Uh, and then that was really it for the receiving end. I talked for a while, Alex. I'll let you rebound and expand on a couple of points I made, whether it's Tommy DeVito and his navigation within the pocket or outside of um, outside of the, um, oh my gosh, what is it when they, when, when they call intentional grounding? Tackle box. Tackle box. There we go. That's what I was, I was going to say in outside the box. Uh, but then I feel like people were going to think it's um, like soccer or something. And then Saquon Barkley too, if you want to. This is this is why it's late. It's after midnight. I'm talking for three minute rants at a time. Gosh, let I the cutlets to... fuel you, man. Let the cutlets fuel I, you. I feel like I'm running on fumes right now. Tommy DeVito is giving me fire. Anyway, go talk. Just get a couple cutlets in you, Josh. Um, what I would say is, I apologize, Tommy DeVito. I was wrong. Clearly, you're the better option over Tyrod Taylor. I'm all on the Tommy Cutlet train. I'm just kidding. Josh is giving me a look right there. Tyrod Taylor, let's be honest. I, I, yeah, for everyone listening on audio, I, I still don't believe that he's the better option. Still. No, he's I not. I know even he's after – no. Okay. We both agree. He's not. Um, is it a fun story? Is this so much more fun than Tyrod Taylor playing? Yes. Am I happy that DeVito is playing and this is all happening and I got to see his agent come up in the top hat and – all black fit kissing his father. Yes. I feel like it's um honestly, I know I keep on saying I'm going to you and then I keep on cutting you off. I'm sorry. Um, I feel like it's honestly, like you said, it's engaging. It's like making the Giants games that are supposed to suck to watch, fun to watch. Yeah. And it, it gives me sort of like a what is he gonna do type of atmosphere. Like I feel like I'm watching an underdog story movie. Like I literally feel like I'm watching either like a reality TV show, which is about the family and then mixed in with the story of how Tommy DeVito is going to play. And it makes you sit on the edge of your seat and watch these giants games with a lot of just more fun in the atmosphere. I'm like, I'm like watching the game tonight in, in my room. And I'm like, is Tommy DeVito going to get this first down? Like, <laughs> it's like, and know, when he gets the first down, they're going to pan to his family. What is his crazy dad going to be doing? Is his agent going to kiss someone? Like, it's so exciting. Um, what's, what's happening with this team. So, um, yes, Tyrod Taylor is still the better quarterback when it comes to the football field, which is what we are here to talk about, even though it is much more fun to talk about um, Tommy DeVito and his family's antics. But, um, yeah, I mean, he was really solid today. And you said, Josh, the main difference was that he was able to step up in the pocket. He didn't take those sacks. And in that final drive, that two-minute drill, 
he was able to really find those short passes, those check downs. Whether it was, I think it was Darius Slayton, then we had, or it was Wandale, then Saquon Barkley, then Darius Slayton. Um, and, and that was able to get that drive going before he hit that big play to Wandale to get us in field goal range. But he looked so much more poised in the pocket and didn't take any sacks, um, threw the ball away on that third down that it looked like he could have tried to force something. He could have taken a big sack uh, and he did not. So there was definitely a lot of improvement from Tommy Cutlets. And, um, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say again, he's not better than Tyrod Taylor. He's not better than Daniel Jones, but he is a pretty decent backup quarterback. Um, and he played very, very well today. And I think that's as simple as that. Saquon Barkley, um, he struggled in the first half, but really started to get going in the second. Obviously had that big run that turned into a fumble, which really shouldn't have been a fumble, but I'm not going to argue about it now because we ended up winning. If we were losing, I'd be on here talking for about 30 minutes about how it doesn't make sense. And I'd probably be bringing the clip up here on my phone and doing a play by play. You'd be like Patrick so Mahomes bad. in the press conference yesterday. Absolutely. I would have been all over. And then for the touchdown or the touchdown that wasn't called the touchdown, if that was called the touchdown, I would have brought up on my phone again. I would have said Aziz Ojolari was getting held on his waist and his arms. How is they missing that holding call? What is happening? I would have spent an hour crying like Patrick Mahomes, but I am not going to do that. All I'll say is they missed a key holding call um, on Ojolari, but that's defense and then offense. You, he's tripped when they, they say, right, he's recovered from the trip. And that's why he hasn't given himself up. But if he's diving to the ground for no reason, he's either giving himself up or he did not regain his footing. It's one or the other. Like, I, I just don't understand the logic of that. So that call was bananas to me. I don't understand a thing. They were trying to, like, um, justify it in the, in the booth, in the uh, broadcasting booth with, I forget to who the rules analyst is, and then obviously um, Troy Aikman and Joe Buck, but no, none of what any of they were saying made any sense. I was like, okay, if he's give if he's not giving himself up, then why is he diving to the ground? And then if he's not, if he regained his footing, then why is he falling to the ground? Like you can't have it both ways. So that call just really didn't make sense. And I touched on Wandale. He was fantastic. And Matt Breida, I think he's going to be the unsung hero of this game. He came in with a couple of really key runs um, on in that, what was it, late or early fourth quarter drive um, that got the Giants uh, in range for that Isaiah Hodgins touchdown. So really, really big plays from him. And the offensive line really grew into the game um, as, as time went on, especially in the fourth quarter. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the uh, rules analyst there. I had a, a guy, might have been John Perry, maybe? I'm yes, not, that's who it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, there you go, but not like that matters too much. Um, I guess, Alex, we, we really did cover the offense pretty well, and, and I think sufficiently here that it's time to move to the Giants' defense, and the Giants' defense that, again, play, <laughs> still putting up the uh, Tommy DeVito famous um, waving of the it's, hand. It's a transition sign now. It it's is a transition. A tra it's a transition sign to say that before we transition to the defense, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. What was the conversation like uh, with Tommy, you know, on the last drive, trying to keep his composure and stuff? Uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. He keeps his composure. There was really nothing. Here's a couple plays we like. Go out there and rip that son of a bitch. Pretty simple. Welcome back into the Giant Take Podcast. Let's talk some defense now. The New York Giants, they had one turnover today, or they forced one turnover from Jordan Love, and that was a pick made by Jason Pinnock on an absolutely horrendous throw. Uh, by Jordan Love into Pinnock's hands. I know Matt LaFleur and the Packers were kind of looking for a call in there, none to be found. And Love in this game went 25 for 39, 218 yards, one touchdown, one pick. So way worse in the completion to attempts uh, for Love and compared to DeVito. Might have had more yards, but it didn't seem like Jordan Love was clicking. Uh, in this Packers offense. And Alex, you tell me differently or you agree. I don't know what you, how you kind of want to take this, but I want to shout out a couple players. Uh, Deontay Banks on that pass breakup in the end zone. I thought that was an absolutely phenomenal play. 
I didn't like how the ESPN reporters or announcers, specifically Troy Aikman, went straight to how the ball was underthrown. I mean, I understand how he wants to look at the quarterback. and right. Troy Aikman is also a Hall of Fame Giants hater, former Cowboys quarterback. He clearly has it out for them every single time he calls our games. <laughs> I, 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 I know he sides to the quarterback position, so he probably immediately looked to, oh, that was another throwing ball, here's why, and he talked about how he did like the drop step before he released it. Gave no credit to Deontay Banks making a sick diving uh, knockdown in the end zone, takes it out of the receiver's hands, I forget who it was intended for, but uh, that was a great play by him, so I remember Banks getting that. He also got a really nice tackle for loss, but again, go back to that pass deflection couple, that couple other really good coverage uh snaps as well where he was just all over whoever the receiver was um he did obviously get beat for the touchdown but uh besides that one play he was really really solid uh throughout the game you're right i just wanted to add that in there uh, no i mean let's we're we're doing good ping pong in here and we can also talk about this guy if you have a uh uh saying for as well a sean robinson had nine tackles in this game deontay banks led the team in tackles by the way with 12 today so like you said kind of all over the field oh uh, one tackle for loss and one pass deflection uh for mr robinson there cave on thibodeau getting that half a sack also a qb hit i don't know if that's the same stat um in there as well eight tackles on the day thibodeau looks pretty good today continued his uh you know, career year campaign with when it comes to the sack totals. I don't know what that puts him at now. I'll take a look, Alex. Um, if you do, you, uh, do you want to talk about either of them just so I can kind of pull up where we're at with cave on sack numbers? Yeah, I'll touch real quick on the defensive law. Actually, first, I'm going to touch on the secondary. You mentioned Banks. He was great. Uh, Cordell Flott definitely had a rough game. Uh, when the Packers pretty much made a big play, it was pretty much consistently on Cordell Flott whether he tripped or uh, made a mistake or just didn't read the ball right. He definitely had a rough one today. But defensive line, you said Ashawn Robinson was very impactful. Uh, Nacho was really impactful. Dexter Lawrence actually had a relatively quiet game. Uh, he was going up against Elton Jenkins, who's a very, very high-end guard uh, in the National Football League. Um, that interior offensive line for the Packers is definitely relatively strong, but um, their tackle spots ever since Bakhtiari – um, you know, hasn't been playing for them, has been definitely suspect. And we saw Ojolari and we saw Thibodeau really take advantage of that. And they were both really, really solid. Um, and, and Thibodeau, I believe he's up to what, like in the 12, 13 sack mark now. Ojolari for sure had his best. No, I'm wrong, Josh. You're shaking 11 and a half, 11 and a half. I was, oh, I was trying to time in earlier, but you were on a roll, so I didn't want to stop you. All right, 12 to 13. I'm close enough. Anyway, um, Ojolari had that a couple of really big tackle for losses. He obviously uh, had that sack or half sack, uh, him and Dexter Lawrence, to um, push the Packers um, out of uh, a touchdown series there and into a field goal, which would inevitably be missed. Um, so overall, the defensive line played well, and it was just a really well-called game uh, by Wink. Yes, the Packers didn't have a great uh, offensive day, um, but they were able to hold them to 22 points, especially when the Giants offense at this point in time is just not really built as a, uh, you know, controlling time of possession type of offense. So the defense is still out there on the field quite a bit. So kudos to them. Kudos to Wink and um, overall decent performance. Alex, I wanted to touch on too. We're talking about defense here. Let's talk about the defensive coordinator, Wink Marindale's defensive scheme, doing it again, sending pressure. We talked about all of these players, eight total QB hits. On, on Jordan Love. That's how you apply pressure to the quarterback. That's how they make mistakes. That's how you get the interception to absolutely nobody besides Jason Pinnock there. Um, so that there you go. And, and so let me run through all those eight, right? One for Thibodeau. One for Micah McFadden. Three for Azizo Delari, who you already talked about his impact on the game. Two for Sexy Dexy. One for Dane Belton. And I think I covered them all. Just a dominant day for this defense, only allowing 22 points and keeping the Giants offense in this game once again. And, you know, they could have done more. They could have done better. They had that pick. And by the way, it was a three and out after that interception, if I'm not mistaken. And they punt it right back to the Packers. So, you know, <laughs> there are times when this team, oh, wait. Was it that or was it the fumble? Then wasn't there a fumble on special teams that the Giants recovered? There, there was a there was so we recovered a fumble and then the other our punt hit McCain and they recovered that. So which one did we go three now? Did we actually score points off the interception? We might have. All right. Now I'm 
it doesn't so matter. You're, what a, you're testing what a, out my memory now, and I'm goldfish. So this yeah, is you rough. are. So I, I don't remember either. Unfortunately, <laughs> you didn't have to but give me a stray like that. I mean, this is obvious. We've mentioned on the podcast before. This you is have known, an this awful is memory. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter because I don't remember it either. But there, there was one. What I'm trying to go at is, I think the Giants, one of those chances, whether it was their muff punt or the interception, where the team, our our team, the Giants, went three and out right after that moment. Right after that moment. And I think the offense, obviously, they always could do better in scoring more points and giving this defense a, more, a better chance to hold on and win. But they did just enough. And someone who could have done more but also did just enough is we'll get to the special teams because we need to have a segment on that in this episode. Randy Bullock, big boy Randy, uh, went one for two in this game. Missed that field goal early. I've never had less confidence in a kicker than I do in Randy Bullock. But, but, got the game winner. And that's that's where we end. And Alex sent me the stat line that ESPN showed right when the game was about to end. And Randy I texted Bullock that, that to game you, winner. I? Seven, I said, yeah, I said you sent that to me. Uh, Seven for 13 on lead changing field goal attempts in the final two minutes of the fourth quarter or overtime. That's that awful. Is, <laughs> that is not a stat you want to read from a kicker. Seven of 13. <laughs> That's like a three point uh, percentage or something. Seven for thirteen. Oh my god! Yeah, no, it's not not good, not good at all. And special teams was disorganized. Yes, they had a good play where they forced the fumble, but then you make a mistake on your own side with McCain just being totally not aware of where the ball is, which I feel like is kind of an important thing when you're um, returning a punt. So you should kind of like you know maybe look up in the air to see where the punt is and not just stand there looking straight into the ground. Um, so maybe a little work and practice on that will help. But um, yeah, special teams, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, Thomas McGay, he definitely not a uh, top unit in the league. Let's just say that, even though they did force that turnover. But it was an even wash um, in terms of special teams because I believe each kicker went one for two. Um, punts were good, but special teams coverage, they had two turnovers on two punts. Uh, neither, you know, did anything super special on kick returns. So overall, it was kind of a dead dead heat in terms of mid-special teams play. Alex, I just read this too. And now that I'm going back through all the stats, Tommy DeVito did so well escaping pressure, like we touched on earlier. The Packers had zero sacks. Tommy to DeVito, be fair, they, they, they had a couple that because he was in the rushing motion, did not count as a sack, but he still lost a yard. Still zero so, sacks. True. And true. It's still one yard loss compared to eight or something if he went down. Still zero sacks, 71 rushing yards, able to stay, not stay put in the pocket and avoid pressure, something we really haven't seen that much from him. But yeah, Alex, like you said, and this, this reference is back to, if you haven't listened already, it's still relevant, obviously. Our interview with Danny King over the bye week, he talked about how if Thomas McGahee isn't fired, during this offseason, something's wrong because to have this many penalties on the special teams unit as the Giants have had is absolutely wild stuff. But regardless, we now sit here again, a 24 to 22 win. The Giants at five and eight on the year, and the Giants in eighth, uh, five and eight on the year, one uh, wild card spot, one win away from an NFC wild card spot in the playoffs, and also. Still send the top 10 of the NFL draft and have the eighth pick. Yeah. They're going to go up against the Saints next weekend. Another very game. Winnable with, game. Another game with Tommy DeVito under center. Another very winnable game against the Saints team that is third in the NFC South right now with a similar record of the Giants at six and seven. So they just barely lost to the Lions, although the Lions seem to have taken or just barely lost to the Lions. Yes, last this past weekend. Um, the Lions seem to have regressed a little two bit. Two weekends ago, I believe. Two weekends ago. They played the Panthers this weekend. They did play the Panthers. <laughs> yeah. They dominated against the Panthers. I apologize. What I will say, though, is I actually ended up watching a little bit of that game, and they were not as dominant as the scoreline portrayed against a very bad Panthers team. And um, would I, Again, another point I want to make, I know it's everyone's saying we were one game out of the wild card spot, but they're all were, what are we now, five and eight currently? There are, I believe, six teams in the NFC that are at six and seven. Yes. Um, so that is a very competitive spot, and we are down a game with two games that we have to play against the Eagles and a game against the Rams. So everyone, 
hold their horses a little bit. We can get excited. Tommy Cutlets leads us to the promised land, maybe. But um, it's going <laughs> to well, be a tough road ahead for sure. Alex, it's beyond a stretch that the Giants make the playoffs this year. But the amount of hope that we can have as Giants fans with DeVito under center is absolutely unimaginable. And if he keeps going, let him keep rolling. Also, let me give you a little hint for those Eagles games. I don't even know if we're going to see Jalen Hurts for at least one of them. Because if the Eagles keep rolling and keep on winning games, they could very well sit their starting quarterback for at least one of those matchups against the Giants if they clinch. Only right. problem is they lost against Dallas, so now they're in a, a fight for their lives there for that bye week. So probably not, but who knows? Maybe they clinch the division but don't end up uh, you know, not able to get the one seed and then they sit in that final game. Who knows? But as long as I see Tommy DeVito, Tommy DeVito's father and his family – and please bring back the agent. I need to see the agent at every game now. Um, we'll be good. We'll have a good rest of the season. If you want more Tommy Cutlet coverage along with the rest of the family, follow us here at the Giant Take Pod on socials, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We really appreciate you listening. Alex is on Twitter at Inorian23. I'm on Twitter at JoshLo29. And watching, we thank you for that too. Hit that thumbs up button down below. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. All right. Alex. Nearing 12.30 a.m., that's how much we're committed to the podcast grind. On Tuesday morning, I have my final math recitation lab, whatever you want to call it, tomorrow in nine hours less than that from right Someone now. Someone has to tell me how math has a lab, but I'll never know. If you wanna, Lab should just be for lab if sciences, you come in my opinion. with me and we can go through mini tab and go through statistics and histograms, Fun. feel free to be my guest. Well, I had my final this morning, so I'm good till Friday now, so I'm chilling. But uh, yeah, not not a fun time to be a college student, that's for sure. But we're getting close to the holidays, and Tommy Cutlet win definitely makes us feel a whole lot better. So Josh waking up at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning or 8 a.m. or whatever he's waking up, um, he'll feel a lot better knowing that Tommy Cutlet uh, is there to lead us to the promised land. <laughs> um, I can't even say that with a straight face. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Hope everyone has a great rest of their week. And we'll see you next time looking forward to the Giants against the Saints. Peace.